So everybody and their dog loves John Wick. Ooh, not the greatest note to start on. Okay, let's try this again. So John Wick is a series about as universally beloved as it is difficult to imagine as a video game. That might sound like a surprising statement because action-filled shooters are the industry's bread and butter, but like, think about it for five seconds. How do you even begin to translate this into a game? John Wick Hex takes it in what I think is a brilliant direction, making it an isometric strategy game. It's got a little bit of that super hot formula in there with how everything moves in real time, but whenever you finish an action or something happens, the game pauses so you can consider your next move. But beyond that most basic comparison, Hex is entirely its own beast, as we're going to get into in just a second. As always, I'm Alex, and this is First Five, where I ask if games are worth your time, not your money. I played a game for five hours, and I'm going to tell you if those were five hours well spent. And today, we're becoming the Baba Yaga in John Wick Hex. John Wick Hex starts out as a very overwhelming game. There's a lot to parse right up front. Shooting, punching, dodging, pushing, takedowns, cover, and this beast of an Adobe Premiere timeline up top. Whew! The game doesn't do the greatest job explaining all of these things either, with a kind of half-tutorial, half-proper full mission that ends up being a bit of a trial by fire. The game periodically throws a PowerPoint show of tutorial tips up throughout the mission as you progress, explaining concepts one at a time, but still also kind of requires you to already know and be following all of those tips, even the ones you don't see until 15 minutes later to not get shot. But this works both ways, because the optimist in life will look at this same system and promptly have to pick their jaw up off the floor once they realize just how impeccably interlocked all of Hex's different mechanics are. It's impractical to just teach you one element at a time, because the game requires all of them just to baseline function. It's an incredibly tight construct, and once you get over the awkward 15 minutes of onboarding, the game really does play out like a gun-fu ballet of death. And that dance is all about threat management. As I mentioned, everything is getting tracked in real time on that massive timeline up top, so often multiple threats are coming at you from multiple directions, and they aren't going to politely get in line and wait to shoot you. Enemies in the game pretty much come in two varieties, gunmen that are immediate and constant threats to your life, and some melee punching bags that mostly exist just to put pressure on you so you can't focus the gunmen. And so your goal is usually to pick off your opponents one by one while making sure that the rest can't hit you back. The moment you get surrounded and have to deal with two attacks at once, you pretty much die immediately. Wick's most basic options similarly mostly consist of shooting things and punching them in the face, but you'll also be making hearty use of the focus system. Using your limited pool of focus points, you can dodge roll, shove enemies around, and most importantly, take advantage of the all-important takedown, which lets you move while putting the hurt on someone. If you haven't noticed, the running theme with all these abilities is that they let you control spacing. You can take down an enemy and land behind a pillar, cutting off another guy's sightline to you. Or, if you find yourself flanked, dodge roll towards one of the flankers, beat his face in, and then turn around and shoot the other guy. All of this impeccable gameplay makes up about 95% of what you'll be doing in Hex, which is a bit of a relief because just about everything else has some major blemishes, starting with the narrative. A prequel taking place in Wick's assassin heyday, Hex is about the titular hero doing what he always does, tear his way through an entire crime organization one gunfu shootout at a time. The game's villain, this mobster bloke named Hex, has kidnapped a few familiar faces from the movies, and Wick is chewing through the Kingpin's lieutenants one at a time to hunt him down. Hex's narrative is paper thin even by John Wick standards, and if you've never seen the movies, you won't even understand what's going on. But what I find truly difficult to swallow about the narrative is Hex himself, who is an insufferable villain, only capable of speaking in awful one-liners. Power defines our place. Power defines our reality. Kings set laws. They're not judged by them. You see, my blood is a promise. Our world has no time for beauty. But if you peel back the surface, 
beneath the bourgeois veneer. Unlicensed firearms. Drugs. Huh. I was going to say... meaning. There's also significant issues with the game's replay system, which plays back the entire level you just did, but in real time. The game's animation is mostly serviceable from an isometric viewpoint, but immediately crumbles in a more cinematic presentation, and the whole thing suffers from more rapid camera cuts than even the worst Hollywood action scene. It's not a critical issue overall, but that's still an entire feature that was basically unwatchable for me. My final major gripe with this game is how it sometimes spawns in enemies. Hex has closets of infinitely spawning bad guys that I have to assume are designed to keep shepherding you through the level and into danger, and most of the time it works as intended, but every once in a while you run afoul of one that's a little too aggressive. On multiple occasions, they kept me mired in an endless Congo line of enemies. I'd never be able to advance because the moment I killed one guy, his replacement spawned in right next to me ad infinitum. And on these occasions, it felt like the mechanic was backfiring. But with those difficulties detailed, it's time to ask, what do you get out of five hours with John Wick Hex? When my time was up, I was just hitting the final mission of the game. I also had to restart a few missions along the way when early mistakes made their endings almost impossible, so if you play a bit better than me, you may even finish. Add in challenge runs for things like par times or not getting hit, and we've got another juicy one that you can enjoy whether you play it for just a few hours or really dig in and try to master it. It also helps that the game is entertaining enough to be worth mastering. Everything surrounding it aside, I could go on all day about how great the actual gameplay is. My list of complaints might make it sound like I didn't enjoy Hex, and indeed, those issues can be disappointing, but on the contrary, I actually had a lot of fun with this one for one simple reason. Hex does one thing really, really well, and it's a godsend that that one thing is what you'll be spending 95% of your time doing. A vast majority of this game clicks, and what would be major blemishes in most other games feel more like occasional annoyances in the background here. And for that reason, I absolutely still think it's worth a look. There's not much out there quite like John Wick Hex, but the closest I've covered is Crying Sons, which is best described as FTL with a plot. You might also be interested in the quasi-real-time Valkyrie profile-inspired combat in Indivisible, which, fun factoid, came out the same day as Hex and ate its original review slot. But I hope you enjoyed this first five review. If you did, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. If you're looking for games that value your time and don't pad themselves, I'm your guy. Thanks for watching this far, and I'll see you all next week.